Well, today is officially the day that we make our return. After five and a half years of building our career out in the far east of Asia and Japan, we have been offered two big opportunities to go back to European football. And one of them, as you know from the end of the last episode, was a huge life-changing sum of money from a club on the coast in our home country of England. Let's go and get into it as we return home. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 47 of The Head Coach with me, Daniel. Those of you that watched the last episode will know exactly what we're back for today. And if not, you've had a big spoiler from the thumbnail, haven't you? Because we are making our return to England despite another great offer coming in in the last episode. And we are going to be going remarkably to the Premier League in record time in this save, just five and a half years in. We're going to be a Premier League manager, something that hasn't happened before. If you're looking forward to that, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. If you're looking forward to seeing the back of Kashima as much as me, then please do that as well, because we are getting rid of a club that economically have been run awfully. The way they've chosen to manage their finances has really pegged us back. And to be fair, after two great stints at Gifu and at Yokohama FC, this one's been a little bit of a drag, I can't lie to you. But if we go through to the inbox and get straight into it, we know that we were approached by Bournemouth, Derby and Willem 2. We obviously turned down Derby because they were in the bottom half of the championship, Bournemouth established in the Premier League. But Willem 2 offered a great option in Europe and one that, if we hadn't been offered the Bournemouth job, I would have loved to have tried. We have saved the game at this point twice though because when we're finished with a loot and save on Twitch, we might have a go at this alternate universe, so we'll leave that one here and we may come back to that on Twitch later in the year. But for now, we cannot accept seven grand a week to go to the Netherlands when we've got the chance to go to a bigger reputation club on life-changing money in the Premier League. Now, they're not offering much of a transfer budget, their finances don't appear great either. But as we know in the Premier League and with Bournemouth's young side, one sale can change everything, so I'm not too worried about that. They are the only club with a bigger reputation than us that have offered us a job at three and a half star and at this stage of the save it's too much to turn down. We put it into perspective and we mention this in real life a lot in our podcast manager specials. I've never earned in this save more than 200 grand a year which yes is a very good wage but a lot of that being spent on flights to and from Japan to visit family, friends, whatever. We're living about as far away from home as we possibly could. It's an opportunity that can't be refused. So. We're going to walk away from the Villem 2-1 in this universe and we are going to go in this head coach save to AFC Bournemouth for the Premier League. Now, they're starting negotiations at 31 and a half grand a week. It's a three-year deal which gives us a lot of protection even if it goes wrong. But I'm going to try and work it up to 35 grand a week. I'm going to remove the relegation wage drop or drop it to 25% and see if they'll give us that extra bit. Straight in with the yes. So that is a huge offer. We have basically got eight or nine times our wage immediately, as well as returning home a couple of hours on the train from our house and a lovely little trip to the south coast of England. You can't complain, can you? We are going to be manager of AFC Bournemouth. We do say goodbye to Kashima, where we've done a decent job in the circumstances. It's going to be interesting to see how they go this summer because the finances are a mess. They're building that stadium they don't need. And they've just not managed their finances well at all. So I'm not sure how their long-term future is going to look. Maybe they were given a bit of false hope from that one title win, particularly when you consider that we got a higher points total this year and only managed to finish fourth. But we're not going to worry about Kashima anymore. We've had a great time in Japan and it's brilliant to see our other two former clubs doing well. But we are going back to English football as manager of AFC Bournemouth. Well, here we are. The Cherries have appointed us as manager from Kashima Antlers. We've had three jobs in Japan and now we're back to England. Apparently, we were not the favourite for the job, but we'll see if the media were wrong or whether there was expectation for someone else. Bournemouth is 16th in the Premier League, exactly one point a game. 16th with 16 points from 16 matches. Isn't that nice? They've won two, lost two and drawn one of their last five, so definitely picked up under the interim. And now we've got to try and bring success here. The most important thing this season is that we keep the club up. 
and then after that we can build you can see three and a half star reputation not sure why this bit's yellow would that be right for bournemouth is it always that i'm confused now richard hughes is technical director he is phenomenal in fm always was underrated as a player and is always very good now as a technical director they're expected to finish mid table as they did last year their fierce rival southampton we know that well 23,000 seater they have got a new stadium here and it's looking pretty good as well good enough facilities average youth ones good youth recruitment we'll try and build on that as the premier league money improves but at the moment they are in a bit of a mess that way they're in the fa cup as that's not started yet the carabao cups in the second round and don't forget though we were at the end of the season at kashima it's december we're in the midst of the premier league season we've got a few games to get through yet before the winter break there's a couple of players on loan who are joining permanently. There's a few names I recognise there. And to be fair, if you look at their starting 11 here, it's a lot of the squad they had at the start because, of course, in real life, Bournemouth have gone this summer for the approach of getting a young team they can build for the future. And with a few additions, such as Josh Doig there, Victor Siganov, one of my old favourites, and a centre forward too, they've got a very good squad. We're going to go and meet them in full in a moment. The objectives is to sign players under 23, Maximum lengths on shorter contracts for older players, uh, be competitive in the FA Cup and become established in the Premier League. There's no crazy expectation and as long as they don't start selling everyone will be alright. So let's go and confirm that, let's get through to the season. I think the one thing I did notice when having a brief look at this squad, there's a lot of Deadwood, as in there's a few of the old boys that have just not been out of shift that are using up the wage bill and I think they're actually slightly over it. But of course a big social media following loads of season ticket holders which is great for the premier league not sure those two numbers make sense but the season ticket holders is only a third of the ground but they've got a waiting list but we'll gloss over that for now the expectation is to avoid a relegation battle reach the third round of the cup and a tactical direction will decide of course once we've had a look at the team if we have a look at the table at the minute you can see three points clear of safety got a tough game to chelsea in three days time as our opener that, of course, will be showing on camera. But Sunderland are pretty much gone already. So it's just about two from the rest, and it's a case of whether we can stay up. But if you go beyond the top five, which Everton are remarkably part of again, it's actually fairly tight in the table. So if we can drag the likes of Leeds, Leicester, Brentford into it, could be a fun season yet. One point behind Southampton, though. And that'll be the big thing for the fans. We finish above them, we should both be safe and pretty happy with supporters and board. So let's go and have a look at all of the introductory stuff. We're going to start, unusually in this instance, with the finances. Because a bit like Kashima, I'm taking a gamble. Because they're not good. They're in pretty big debt at the moment, with minus 91 million being listed as the overall balance. Of course, they're not generating the same level of revenue as their wage expenditure. And because they've got so many players in the squad, you can see they're about 60 grand over it at the minute. And over a season, that equates to a fair amount of money, doesn't it? So. We're going to have to look after them a little bit and I'd imagine there's probably going to be one big sale but the director of football will be in charge of that. We did mention as well the fact that Kashima were really poor in the recruitment side but everyone else has been good and they've been a well-run club. I wonder if this is going to match Kashima because of the financial difficulties or will those challenges mean that once a player or two is sold we get to see the best of a director of football. Incidentally we've not got one here at the minute so for now it will be Richard Hughes in charge of stuff, but he's a pretty handy operator, isn't he? So we're not going to worry about him too much. For now, though, no transfer budget. I'm expecting no additions in January. I came over because I saw the squad was decent, and to be fair, the chance to return home. The facilities, as we mentioned, everything's decent, but maybe not quite the top level you would expect. So let's go and have a look at both the staff and the players we've got to work with. And we'll start with the staffing, which is the bit you probably want me to get out of the way. A lot of the people that were here to start with, we've met Richard Hughes. The assistant manager has left with the manager, so we've not got him here now. But we have got plenty of other senior coaches. So Sean Cooper has been here from the very start. He's a decent coach, very good mentally. Maybe not the best technically, but he'll do a job. We've got a senior fitness coach in Charlie Moore, who is outstanding. We've got a senior set-piece coach, who's pretty decent. And we've got two senior goalkeeping coaches in Gareth Stewart, a former player for them. And Neil Moss, a former Southampton keeper, who's absolutely excellent too. So lots of quality in the club. Other familiar names include a wonderful head of youth development in Bruce Sarasi. He's been at the club for years and is absolutely remarkable at his job. 
And then they've also got Andrew Sermon as an under-18s assistant, former players that will be popular at the club as examples. The youth managers, Alan Connell is okay. Dan Carroll is okay. But let's have a look at the recruitment and physiotherapy teams. Head physio, how are you? Very good. Senior physios, yeah, they're all fine. We've got no problem with the abilities there. Stuart Douglas is there. Oh, I've got to tell you a story about him. He scored two, the first ever Luton game I went to in real life in this 99-2000 season. Only scored three that whole year, but scored two on the day. He became my favourite player, was really hit by injuries, and in the end didn't quite reach the heights that were intended from his career, but he was a fabulous centre forward. He's now a very good physio. Great to see him there as well. Uh, my first ever footballing hero. Now let's go down to the scouting team. We've got Mark Burchill, who is not bad, but... A name that's familiar to them as well. And then they're going through the scouts. John Willis is very good. Jack Brooks, not bad. Lorenzo is okay. Uruguayan. We know there's a few gems over there from our Hemel save a couple of years back. Alex Wilkinson's brilliant. Simon Ward is very good. Simon Francis, former club legend, isn't bad. We've got a Dutch scout who's exceptional. And another good one there, who we used to sign in FM a fair few times. So... Looking at this squad with Carl Fletcher as the loan manager as well, everything's pretty solid behind the scenes. That's the bit we maybe didn't have at Kashima was the brilliant coaching and recruitment team behind it. But what we haven't got here is the money to compete. So as well as having a look at the first team in a minute, we need to have a look at the youth setup and see who we've got in there. Are there any gems in the 21s or the 18s? Well, let's have a quick look. We have got a 20-year-old goalkeeper, Mark Steele, who... Yeah, I mean, if we've only got two in the senior squad, he would be a very good third choice. I've got no issue with him. The Welsh international already is very good at his job. Yep, happy to have him. Doesn't look like there's any exceptional talents, though. We've got a couple of others who are two star, but the main one's out on loan at the minute and can't really finish as a striker. No other players at the minute above one and a half star. The biggest potential is Lloyd Roberts. Oh, he's OK, but probably not going to make it to the top. So yeah, no real gems there. In the 18s, we have got one player with big potential in Robert Witham. Four and a half star, but he's nowhere near it. And his determination and natural fitness are both poor. Not ideal, I think we would say. So for now, we are going to be relying on the first team. Let's get it out of the way and go and have a look at them. Because there are a lot of familiar names here. There's a lot of the originals and it's a very big squad. So... You can see already they've got two or three on the transfer list. They've got a couple on the loan list. I think there's going to be a few moving on now. There's none on really ridiculous wages. We've got a couple on 100 grand a week, but none up in the sort of 175s, 200s, which we have inherited before in a head coach. And there are some real supreme talents here. So I feel pretty confident of staying up. It's just whether we've got a balance squad, which I haven't looked at in detail yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is just pick out a couple of the lower ones, because Ryan Christie is old and one and a half start and out on loan. So let's get you in the 21s, because you're not going to feature. And then Roman Egan Riley, who is a young centre-half, very similar. Let's just get him in the 21s for now. This is the squad we want to work with. We start with two goalkeepers who are ranked very similarly. One is an older head that you'll know very well from West Ham in real life. Alphonse Ariola is our backup goalkeeper. He is two and a half star ability. Out of contract next summer, but very solid. The agility's going slightly, but he's good enough. And as long as the other keeper's slightly better, I'm happy with him as a number two. Because the number one on paper is Italian goalkeeper Marco Carneschi. And he is... Yeah, he's very good. How is he only two and a half star? I'm looking at his attributes. Maybe bar kicking. There's no weakness at all. He's great in the air. Got a really good personality. Got a good throw which starts counter attacks. That's good to have. Six foot three, rock solid, not a big wage. I mean, I don't really know how he's only two and a half star. His rate in this season is awful. And I don't know what's causing that because normally it would be a dip in like a concentration or something, but his mental stats are actually very good. So I'm going to keep an eye on this one. Is it just a poor season? Yeah, maybe so because the last three years he's been rock solid. So. We're going to get him as first choice, hopefully build his confidence. I'm thrilled with him as a goalkeeper. At centre-half, you'll recognise all the names because they're there in real life. Marcos Sanesi is a 31-year-old Argentinian centre-half. Maybe not world-class, but very solid. One of those 
I always go back to like a Mark Mini AZ years ago, it used to have attributes like this, just like 13, 14 for everything. And he is a good central defender. He's been first choice this year. He's actually played pretty well. He's fairly professional. He's got the natural left footed balance. Happy with him. The next one is Chris Mepham, who's always a go to in FM. He's now 31 as well, which is maybe a problem for the future. If the club don't sell these players on now, are they going to be left not getting a return for their investment? But for this season, he's a very good player, established for Wales, a good centre half. Could play in the middle of a back three as well because he's got great anticipation. He's good in the air, he's determined, he's got a great character. And I love the fact that he's got great positioning and doesn't dive into tackles. The third one is Ilya Zabani, Ukrainian international. Very good central defender again. And probably natural on the right of a three. So we've got three good centre halves, which means we can play either four at the back or five, depending on how we want to go. How has he only played 40 games for the club? He's barely featured. Has he had really bad injuries or something? No. Why has he not played football? He's a very good player. He's going to be playing football for me, I can assure you of that. The other centre half is one who's on loan at the moment, joining permanently for four and a half million at the end of the season. And you know what? He's not as good as the other three, but he's solid enough and again can play on the left or the centre role of a back three or can play at left back generally. I think he's a pretty solid option and I'm happy to have him as a backup. We've got two right backs who look very good. The first one is Max Ahrens, who is the star of the show. 28 years old now, the best rated player at the club. And I think we're bordering on genuine world class here. Maybe not quite there technically, but mentally exceptional. Physically a monster. We'll get up and down the line at right back or right wing back. Likes to get forward, likes to get down the line and doesn't dive into tackles. Is exactly what we want. The other one is a former City youngster, Pablo Maffeo. He has now moved on, had a career in Europe and come back to Bournemouth. Not a bad player again. And I hope we've got a left back as good as him. Otherwise, we're in a bit of trouble. But a very good backup. Probably too good to be a backup. And again, listed as a regular starter there, but not getting football. And at 31, seems a bit of an odd signing to have paid 16 million for. But maybe Max Aarons was injured last year. I don't know. We're going to leave Tyler Adams for a minute because we know he's a centre midfielder primarily. Let's move on to the other listed right back, which is Ollie Byrne. He is an 18 year old. He's come from Bristol City where he was signed last year, so will become homegrown at the club. He's a wonder kid officially. He's two-footed, but he can't really play wing back. So we're going to have to either play a back four or get him working in training. Probably not anywhere near as good as the others at the minute, so maybe the sort of candidate to go out on loan. Whether or not the director of football will do that, I don't know. I guess we have to see what happens in the staff meetings because he's not featuring at the minute. And it seems wrong that he wouldn't when he's been playing championship football regularly. So we'll keep an eye on him, but definitely a star for the future. On the left-hand side, we've only really got one option. But it's a pretty good one, isn't it? Josh Doig is a fantastic Scottish international. Left back or left wing back. He's just class across the board. Maybe not the best defensively, but going forward, he's a gem. He's quick. He likes to get up and down the line. What a personality again. And that's maybe the biggest difference between here and Kashima. We talked about them being a team of bottle jobs. Here, virtually every player, resolute or professional. It's almost like you can tell Sean Dyche was in charge, can't you? So the fence out the way, let's move into midfield. And we'll start with the man that we just glossed over because he's the joint best rated midfielder. Tyler Adams is a 29-year-old USA international. One of the best paid players. He's got a great personality again. Not the best technically going forward, but as a ball winner, as a box-to-box, -box, as an engine of the team, He's exceptional. The natural fitness is great. The work rate, the anticipation, he's got all of that. And defensively and the passing range, absolutely fine. So could see him being a very useful player for us. The second one is Lewis Cook. We'll gloss over Fernandez because he's out on loan at the minute. But Lewis Cook is 31 now. Three-star ability. Very different type of midfielder. Excellent on the ball. But again, still works hard. Composed. Very good natural fitness. Maybe more of a player who could sit in midfield though, maybe in that holding role if we choose to play with it, rather than flying forward on the counter-attack. So that's Lewis Cook out the way. Let's have a look at Jeffrey Condogbia, who appears to be one of those they just can't shift at 35. He is nowhere near. I mean, he's still got enough technically, but he's an emergency at best. He's made a few sub-appearances this year. He's physically well over the hill. 
good personality. God, they only signed him this season. Why have you paid four and a half million for him this year? What a horrendous signing that is. Well, hopefully he'll leave the club in January. He's on the transfer list. Fingers crossed the technical director, director of football, whoever it is, can do their bit. But someone we don't want leaving is Alex Scott, who was a bit of a star of our Bristol City save last year. We had a, a mixed relationship with him. In the end, he came good, and look at him here. Three and a half ability, four-star potential. Can play naturally in a holding, attacking, or centre midfield. And his personality and mental attributes are just phenomenal. He's composed, he's got flair, he's great off the ball, he's determined. And he's agile with a good engine as well. I mean, you can't ask for much more. Maybe again, not superb technically, but a very good player. I'm sure we'll get plenty of use out of him. Again, not having a bad season considering where the team are. The next one is a young player who is wanted on transfer. I was going to say loan for a minute there. Thiago Martinez at 21. Decent potential. Not the same level as the ones we've looked at so far, but very much in that sort of Lewis Cook mould. And again, a very good personality, just not quite got the attributes to star at the minute. Moving down, we've got a lone player from the Netherlands, Gus Till. He is a good player in real life and he's six foot, which is also a benefit. More natural in the number 10 role than centre midfield, but can play up front and do a bit there as well. He's been in as a squad player. He's not really featuring much. He's on loan from Forest, actually. Just a solid all-rounder, but again, not really first 11 level. Let's move now into the rest of the attacking midfielders, wide players, strikers, etc. Because we've got to work out a tactic here. The defence I looked at made me think back three, but I would be prepared to drop Senesi and go to a back four as well. So let's see what we've got. We have Gabriel Veron, two and a half star ability, can play naturally off either wing. Again, a good player, maybe not a first 11 player. And I think that's reflected by his appearances this year, which have all been off the bench. He's not bad, though. One of the few that's not got a brilliant personality. Mikhail Damsgaard is transfer listed. His three-star ability has obviously moved from Brentford via a couple of clubs. Yeah, he's okay. Not the most naturally fit, but he's got a bit of flair. Can play naturally off the left, which will probably help us if we go for wide men. And very versatile, which is nice. But if they can get 46 million for him... I can see why he might be an option to sell. But for now, I'm happy to have him as part of the squad. And it looks like they might make a profit on him. So not the worst deal in the world if they do. The next one is one of the stars going forward. Justin Cliver is now 29. Three and a half star ability off the left wing. Can cover on the right as well. Just that little bit of stardust, isn't he? He's that bit quicker. He's that bit trickier. Got that extra bit of technique and flair. And I think he could be one to produce the goods for us. So far this season couple of goals already good performances not training well which is a worry but we'll keep him on board because he seems to be doing pretty well for us on the other side one of my fm favorites is victor siganov he's a 31 year old ukrainian international has joined from girona in this save and again while he's not outstanding at anything he's a sort of player who's very good at a lot he can play off the right can cut in he's got quality on his left foot and again the technique is there so I feel like he's going to be an important part of the team. Likes to place his shot, likes to curl the ball in and cuts in from the right. Tries tricks as well. I mean, he's got that little bit of flair about him, hasn't he? The rest of the forward players include Mamadou Sonko, who appears to be the weakest of the lot, but he's also the youngest. A 23-year-old Swede has just broken into the international setup and again, does have a good personality, but maybe not the best player overall. He's wanted on transfer by a couple of German clubs. And he was signed here for 3 million. So if they can get 30 odd, I could kind of understand that deal. I've got to be honest. Three more to go. And Dominic Solanke is not the best striker at the club. He's a three-star ability 31-year-old. Has got a decent record for the team and has been largely used off the bench this year. We know what he's got. He's just a good all-rounder. He's six foot two, but he's also fairly quick. He's good running in behind. He's got a lot to his game. And... If we do end up playing with a front two, I could see him being a star. If we play with one up front and the other guy's exceptional, what a sub he is to have because he still looks a very good player. But the star striker is 25-year-old Brazilian Marcos Leonardo. Has come over from Brazil. My word, he's some advanced forward, isn't he? A right footer, quite quick, composed, great finisher. Can play off the left as well, which is another thing to consider. He's a top paid player at the club. 
He scored three goals this season. He got double figures all of the last three. I don't think we can leave him out, can we? Because he's got such a good goal record. We've got to give him the time. The third striker is Christian Spendy. He is a 25-year-old Albanian who's decent again, but not exceptional. And he's very much the third best of the three. Came in a couple of years ago, has not featured that much. But if we need him, if we do have an injury or two, I'd probably trust him to pop up with a goal here and there. So this is quite tricky, actually, because I'm not really set on one formation. Going forward, I'd probably like to have a front three of Clivert, Siganov and Leonardo, or a front two of Solanke and Leonardo. In defensive areas, I could play either a four or a five. And I guess the problem with it is there's not that much depth in centre midfield. We've got Tyler Adams is a set starter and so is Alex Scott. Cook could start. I've got no issue with it. But then if we played all three from the start, there's literally nothing behind it at first team level. Unless we maybe got Damsgaard to cover something like that. I'm not so sure about this. So let me know in the comments what tactic you would go for. I'm going to stew over it the next few days. Of course, if you think about it. In all of our other saves, the loot and switch one, the south end one, we've had different tactics home and away. We've had two or three different setups we can switch between, depending on what the opposition are doing. So far in the head coach, we've not had to do that in Japan. It's a lot more tactically structured. But here, I think we're going to have to be flexible. So we are probably going to set up two tactics, maybe three to work between. But overall, I've got to be honest, I've inherited what I thought I would, which is a very solid squad at Premier League level. A few too many players there. If they could get Martinez out, Kondogbi are out, Sunko out, you'd probably then say it's a good squad. But overall, I'm fairly happy with what we've got. Let me know in the comments what tactic you would play with this squad. Let me know which players you would be prepared to leave out because, of course, the January window is not far away. And whether it's Richard Hughes or a new director of football, we're going to be trusting them probably with a bit of an exodus because given the financial situation of the club, I can't see the squad staying over budget like this, but let's have a quick look at the season preview for where we were expected to be. And you can see 13th place in the mix with some of those sides I mentioned. It is about doing enough here rather than doing anything spectacular. If we have a look at the schedule. I did mention the first game is away at Chelsea, but look at the two after that. Oh my words. Chelsea leads at home and then Southampton away. The big derby game. That throws a spanner in the works for the next episode. Do you know what? I'll see if we can do it or not. It might mean a slightly longer one because we'll have a tactic to introduce. But I think we just focus on the football. We've had a big introduction. We've met everyone in detail. We've not got to worry about the window till the next episode. So let's just get through it. We're going to try and do a triple header. Chelsea, Leeds and Southampton in the derby. And by that point, we'll either be very popular or there'll be some fans calling for our head already. An unknown manager coming back from Japan, and they're going to put their trust in me to keep them up. If you want to find out if we can, and you did enjoy this introduction to our return to English football, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Let me know in the comments where you think we finish, what happens in January given the financial situation, and do we pick up points at our rivals in the next video. Let me know your thoughts on all of that. If you want to stay up to date and find out if we do, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We'll be back in a couple of days time to find out all the answers and see how we get on in our first games in charge. But between now and then, we'll be back with Southend United tomorrow, January deadline day there, and there are a few clubs sniffing around some of our stars. Keep your eyes peeled to see how we get on in that one. You can find a playlist so far up in the eye above. Also up there are links to the Twitch channel, the football podcast, some of our step-by-step -step guides to FM24. And of course, it's a big week over on the podcast channel and on the Twitch channel with loads of live streams and loads of prediction shows. So keep your eyes peeled on both of those. Make sure you follow us over there. And thank you very much for watching. We return to English football and it's AFC Bournemouth we're going to be managing. I'll see you next time to find out how we get on.